here is some advice that you probably weren't expecting. Try to make as many mistakes as possible on the GRE. Let me explain what I mean. I'm referring to mistakes made during your preparation. I made loads of mistakes when preparing for the GRE, despite ending up with a 340 in the real test. If you don't make enough mistakes in preparation, you're not doing enough questions or you're not doing hard enough questions. No one likes making mistakes, but if you avoid questions because you don't want to make mistakes, you're really missing out. So here are my four rules about making mistakes on the GRE. Number one, try not to blame the question. This is the most common mistake. You will get a sentence equivalence question wrong and the temptation will be to say, but my sentence makes sense, what's the problem? Or maybe you will get a quantitative comparison question wrong and you'll say, but there's no way to get it right in two minutes. This question is dumb. The truth is this is your brain trying to soothe your pride. But you have to overcome that and say to yourself, why does this resource say that I'm wrong? Is it possible that my answer is good, but not the best? Take this example from majortests.com. The prize competition was mm, as a showcase for new technology, but instead the competition was marred by disqualifications and disputes. Pause the video if you want to have a go at this question. You might have picked B, conceived, as one of your answers and be so annoyed that that's not one of the right answers. And you might be tempted to say, but I would totally say conceived. The prize competition was conceived as a showcase for new technology. And then in your annoyance, you'd move on. Instead, if you can overcome that pride and say, why is conceived wrong? The reason here is because conceived isn't the opposite of what comes next in a sentence. You see that word, but, that suggests there's gonna be a big contrast. And to contrast being marred by disputes and disqualifications, you can't just say it was conceived as a showcase. Something being conceived or started as a showcase for new technology is not quite enough of a contrast with something being marred by disqualifications. Instead, the answer here is C and D, touted and heralded. Both of those words mean advertised. The prize competition was advertised or touted or heralded as a showcase, but instead of what it was promoted to be or advertised to be, it was marred by disqualifications and disputes. We swallowed our pride, we didn't blame the question, and we looked up what was actually wrong. I've got to add in, before we carry on, don't make the mistake of not liking this video, leaving a comment and subscribing. Okay, I'm glad I got that in. Rule number two, if you get a question wrong, try to figure out yourself why you got it wrong. Just for 30 or 60 seconds, you don't have to spend your whole day trying to work it out, but before you read the answer explanation, try and see for yourself why you got it wrong. It's easy to look at the explanation and say, oh yeah, that makes sense. I would have got that right. I just made a little mistake. But what's going on there is your brain is just adjusting because it knows that's the right answer. Instead, if you can figure out why the right answer is correct yourself without looking at the explanation first, that's really gonna help your brain to avoid the bad habits that went with your wrong answer and pick up on the good habits that will direct you to the right answer. It also helps to avoid the complacency of your brain thinking everything's fine, I don't really need to do much more revision on that topic. Rule number three, if you read the explanation and still don't understand, always try to Google that question. I know this sounds obvious, but many people, if they don't get the explanation in the book or on that website, they give up. Instead, always try to get to the bottom of what is actually wrong. There are dozens of different sites that can help you out here. For example, GMAT Prep Club is a good one. This also helps psychologically. I remember when I struggled on a question, it was reassuring to know that other people were struggling on that question too. Rule number four, and this is one of my favorites, write down not only why the correct answer is right, but also why your answer was wrong. People always neglect that second one. But the truth is your brain is a habit forming machine. And until it realizes what's wrong with its current habit, it won't change and have a new habit. So you need to really convince yourself and convince your brain what was wrong with what you were doing before 
before it will accept a new answer, a new explanation. At this point, I can predict what you're thinking. Philip, just give us an example of what you mean. And that's what I'm about to do. Let me show you a good example of how to document a mistake. I'm gonna use another question from majortests.com. The new institute provides intensive postgraduate teaching to a wide range of students in the hope that these students will use their knowledge to boost the country's something economy. Languishing, emerging, booming, domestic, bankrupt, or flagging. If you want to, pause the video and try this question yourself. I'm gonna pretend that you picked B and C because you didn't know what languishing means and you thought that emerging and booming are both positive words. Now, those are the wrong answers. And so at this point, we would spend 30 to 60 seconds trying to figure out why those were the wrong answers ourselves. But let's say we've spent that time and we still can't figure it out. And then we see that the correct answer is A and F. Languishing and flagging both mean not doing so well or failing to be successful. They fit in well because this institute wants the students to use their knowledge to save the country's economy, to boost something that's failing. If something's not doing so well, it makes sense that you would want to boost it. But here are the notes that you could make. You would write down, did not focus on the fact that emerging and booming are not the same thing. Booming is a much stronger word. Even though the answers are both positive, they are too different from each other to be right. So even if it means picking a word I don't know, avoid picking words that aren't synonyms for sentence equivalents. Also, you could write down, languishing means failing to be successful. With that note, we have now learned the important lesson of picking accurate synonyms. And we've also noted down a new word for our vocabulary. So this would be the perfect note to take. By writing this down, by physically writing it down or typing it onto the computer, it helps your brain process the information. I do it all the time. Yes, it takes two to three minutes to write this down, but it's a valuable time investment. Don't forget that after a few weeks or a few months of studying, you're gonna have a wonderful resource to look through when you're revising before the final test. You can look over what you've written and be reminded of so many valuable lessons. By following these four habits, I accumulated dozens, if not hundreds, of mistakes and lessons before I got the 340 in the GRE. Obviously, that meant that I was lucky enough not to make any mistakes on the real thing. Thank you to Tom Addy for the subject of this video. As always, if you found this video helpful, please do subscribe and like, and leave a comment about what you want me to cover next. Don't forget, it could be about literally anything. Have a great day and thanks for watching.